Margarita II, born April 16, 1940, is a member of the Danish royal family who reigned as Queen of Denmark from 1972 until her abdication in February 2024, marking 52 years to the day of her reign. You may recognize her as the royal with a classic beehive hairdo. Having reigned for exactly 52 years, she was the second longest reigning monarch after Christian IV, a Danish king of the 1600s, and the longest reigning female monarch in Danish history. The Danish royals do not have a crowning ceremony after an abdication, and so while her son, former Prince Frederick, is now Queen, or I'm sorry, King Frederick X, there was little fanfare about it. Let's take a look at the Danish tiaras that we may see on King Frederick's Queen Mary of Denmark. Queen Mary was actually born in Australia, making her the only Australian-born monarch of Europe. Her style isn't as interesting as Queen Marguerite's. Queen Marguerite once sewed a waxy orange and yellow tablecloth into a raincoat, and she personally illustrated the works of J.R.R. Tolkien and shared those illustrations with the author. In contrast, Queen Mary's style is more subdued, and she volunteers for the United Nations Population Fund, which seems devoted to increasing populations in third world countries while decreasing populations in developed white countries. Denmark, at 1.78 births per woman, is currently under natural replacement levels. However, we did see an uptick of 0.3% in Denmark births last year, and Queen Mary and King Frederick have fourth children, so hopefully the uptick continues. Otherwise, Danish politicians will likely turn to the tried and true ethnic replacement voter bloc method seen in the United Kingdom, Germany, Ireland, France, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and the United States. Denmark is perhaps one of the most tiara-rich countries in Europe, but among their large cache of sparklers, a few tiaras stand out as particularly historically important. One of these, the Pearl Poir tiara, highlights the maternal heritage of the Danish kingdom. The tiara is made of diamonds set with 18 pear-shaped or poire pendant pearls. It's thought to have been made in the first half of the 19th century. In his book on Denmark's royal jewels, Bjarnstein Jensen notes the tiara was a wedding gift in 1825 to Princess Louise of Prussia on her marriage to Prince Frederick of the Netherlands. Prussia is an important country to Danish history since Denmark sits above Germany in Europe. Louise was the daughter of King Friedrich Wilhelm III of Prussia, which has led many to presume the tiara was made in present-day Germany, most likely in Berlin. The tiara was accompanied by a diamond brooch with five pearl pendants. Princess Louise was painted in it in 1856. We see a similar or perhaps the same tiara appear on Princess Marianne of the Netherlands, and so it's likely that the tiara was shared among the Dutch royal family. In 1849, Prince Frederick and Princess Louise helped to arrange a marriage between their eldest daughter, Princess Louise, and Crown Prince Charles of Sweden. It wasn't a happy marriage. Louise, then Louise of Princess Louise was very much in love with Charles, but he didn't find her attractive and treated her with disdain and neglect. In 1859, when his father died, the couple became King Charles XV and Queen Louise of Sweden and Norway. They had two children, but only one, Princess Lovisa, lived to adulthood. Back in the Netherlands, Princess Louise became ill. In late 1870, Queen Louise of Sweden and Norway traveled to be with her mother, Princess Louise, on her deathbed. Princess Louise died in December 1870, and in her will she left the Pearl Poir tiara to Queen Louise of Sweden. 
but Queen Louise made her way back to Stockholm and then caught pneumonia. Before the contents of her mother's estate could be distributed, Queen Louise died too. She never got to wear the pearl tiara. But another Louisa would be able to wear it. The tiara was subsequently given to Queen Louise's only daughter, Princess Louisa of Sweden. Even though Louisa was the only living child of King Charles the Fifteenth, the constitution in Sweden at the time prevented her from inheriting her father's throne. This was amended upon Marguerite's father's death. To ascend the throne, Princess Louisa agreed in 1869 to a marriage with Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark. The tiara traveled with Crown Princess Louisa to Copenhagen, and it has been in Danish hands ever since. In 1896, Louisa wore the pearls at the marriage of her son, Prince Carl, to Princess Maud of Wales in London. Frederick and Louisa became Denmark's king and queen in 1906. In Louisa's hands, the tiara became a part of a married parure, matched up with other similar pieces of pearl and diamond jewelry to make a set. The tiara itself looks similar to the Cambridge lover's knot tiara. A large diamond brooch with five pearl pendants had been made to match the tiara at the time of its original creation, and Louisa inherited that as well. She began wearing both pieces with a pearl and diamond necklace that she had received as a wedding gift from the Khedive of Egypt. Two pearl pendants that were originally part of that necklace were also turned into earrings. One more piece was also added to this parure, a pearl and diamond cluster brooch which was originally the clasp of an elaborate pearl necklace. This necklace had been Louisa's wedding gift from Tsar Alexander III of Russia and his wife Maria Fyodorovna. Born Princess Dagmar of Denmark, she was sister of Louisa's husband, Frederick. Queen Margarita II has worn this necklace with the crown as well. In her will, Louisa placed this entire group of pearl and diamond jewels in trust, ensuring that the set could never be broken up. Although the suite is not part of the Danish crown jewels, it passes directly from monarch to monarch, and it is generally worn only by the country's queen. All of Louisa's successors, Queen Alexandrine, Queen Ingrid, and Queen Margarita II, have worn the pearl poire tiara and the accompanying pearl and diamonds. On two separate occasions, however, the tiara has been worn by a member of the royal family acting as a representative of the monarch. In 1937, Crown Princess Ingrid borrowed the tiara from her mother-in-law for the coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth of the United Kingdom. For the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, Denmark was represented by Prince Axel and Princess Margarita. She also borrowed and wore the pearl tiara. Queen Margarita was generally generous with her jewelry loans, as we will see. The Khedive of Egypt tiara, created by Cartier in 1905, may be one of the most romantic of the Danes. Khedive means Turkish Viceroy and reflects the Ottoman period of its creation. Princess Margaret of Connaught, known in the family as Daisy, was a granddaughter of Queen Victoria and a very eligible princess. She joined her parents, the Duke and Duchess of Connaught, and her sister, Princess Patricia, on a royal tour of Egypt. Royal parents in those days always kept an eye out for appropriate royal spouses for their marriage-age daughters. While in Cairo, the family met Prince Gustav Adolf, the future King of Sweden, and he and Daisy fell in love. They were married at Windsor Castle, and Daisy received a cavalcade of jewels as wedding gifts, including the Connaught Diamond Tiara, made by jeweler E. Wolfe and Company, from her parents, and the King Edward VII Ruby Tiara from her uncle, the King of England. In May 1920, she died, and when he announced her death, Sweden's Prime Minister declared that the ray of sunshine at Stockholm Palace has gone out. While Daisy's two tiaras are stunning and still worn by members of the Swedish royal family today, the most sentimental gift Daisy received for her wedding was the Khedive of Egypt tiara, now held by the Danes. This is a diamond scroll tiara given by Khedive Abbas II of Egypt as a memento of the couple falling in love in Cairo. 
Khedive Abbas II was an Egyptian nationalist who op openly defied British influence in his court and was subsequently exiled to Switzerland. So his friendship to another European kingdom may have had deeper motives. The tiara features seven circular scrolls and diamonds set in platinum and topped by floating diamonds surrounded by a laurel wreath pattern. Royal jewel expert Lauren Kina of the Court Jeweler website says, I love the romantic love story behind it, but I like the design too. The scrolls are so balanced and the laurel leaf designs are integrated so beautifully, and it looks fantastic with a bridal veil. The Edwardian era was a more is more period with royal magpies like Daisy's aunt, Queen Alexandra, covering themselves with jewels from head to waist. Consequently, many jewelers created pieces that could be adapted and worn in multiple ways, and the Khedive tiara is no exception. It can have its frame removed and worn as an enormous dress ornament or a stomacher. Daisy and her husband moved to Sweden, where they had five children, including her only daughter, Ingrid. At the age of 38, while pregnant with her sixth child, Daisy died of sepsis. Ingrid, who was only 10 years old when her mother passed away, inherited the Khedive of Egypt tiara and took it with her to Denmark when she married Crown Prince Fred Frederick in 1935. Ingrid didn't wear the Khedive for her wedding, but it's become the wedding tiara of choice for all Queen Ingrid's female descendants, including her daughters, Queen Margarita of Denmark, Princess Benedict of St. Wittgenstein Berleburg, and Queen Anne Marie of Greece. It's also been worn at the weddings by all Ingrid's married granddaughters as a memento of love. The Baden Palmet tiara is an heirloom with a long history. The tiara is originally German. It was made in the 19th century by Koch. It was a wedding gift from King Wilhelm of Prussia to his daughter, Princess Louise, for her marriage to Grand Duke Frederick of Baden in 1856. The tiara then migrated to Stockholm when Frederick and Louise's daughter, Victoria, married King Gustav V of Sweden in 1881. On Victoria's death in 1930, her granddaughter, Princess Ingrid, inherited the tiara. When Ingrid married Friedrich IX of Denmark five years later, the tiara moved with her to Denmark. When Queen Ingrid died in 2000, her vast jewel collection passed into the royal families of Denmark, Greece, and St. Wittgenstein Berleburg. Queen Margarita II was the lucky one who inherited the lovely petite tiara. The tiara itself is sweet and romantic. It features heart-shaped palmette motifs with small diamond flowers that have yellow-toned centers in between the hearts. The romantic feel makes this tiara perfect for weddings as well. It's also smaller and more comfortable than most of the show-stopping tiaras owned by Queen Marguerite II, so it makes frequent appearances. Danish Queen Mary has worn the modern Ole Lingard Midnight Tiara before, so it's possible we will see it again. According to the Ole Lingard website, the Midnight Tiara is an extraordinary special piece designed by goldsmith Charlotte Lingard for a grand exhibition at the Museum of Amalienborg, the Royal Palace in Copenhagen, in 2009. Her Majesty Queen Mary has worn the Midnight Tiara for several special occasions, occasionally with a coordinating brooch and a pair of ear earrings designed by Charlotte Lingard. Most recently, Her Majesty Queen Mary wore the Midnight Tiara along with a custom-made gown also designed by Charlotte Lingard for a 2022 gala dinner at the Royal Palace of Oslo. Throughout the years, the Midnight Tiara has also been put on display at selected exhibitions as well as the Ole Lingard Copenhagen flagship store located in the heart of Copenhagen. Adorned with 1,340 diamonds and 31 moonstones, the Midnight Tiara is composed of leaves and slender branches crafted from black, black oxidized silver, 18 karat rose gold, and 18 karat white gold. The sprouting buds are set with 31 specially cut moonstones in a variety of blue, black, and white hues, and 1,340 brilliant cut brilliant cut diamonds set in a sparkling diamond pave. Inter interpreting the nuances of nature, the Midnight Tiara is an intricate piece of craftsmanship. Fine grooves are carefully hand engraved into the surface of the gold by master goldsmiths creating a textured and truly unique finish. 
more than 300 hours were put into the creation of the tiara. Designing the Midnight Tiara, Charlotte Lingard was inspired to create a complete collection of fine jewelry with a unique satinized surface, and the leaves collection was brought to life. The satinized gold surface has since become a coveted signature feature in all Lingard Copenhagen's fine jewelry collections. Next, consisting of three large and two smaller diamond flowers set in a foliate design, the Princess Dagmar tiara is of unknown provenance, but since Princess Dagmar's mother, Queen Lavisa, possessed a legendary jewelry collection, it's possible it could come from her. However, it is also likely that the tiara was a cast in gold heirloom, often worn by Princess Dagmar, most notably at the 18th birthday banquet of her great niece, the current and now past Queen Margarita of Denmark in 1958, and the wedding of another great niece, Princess Astrid of Norway, in 1961, just a few months before her death. While some believe that the diamond floral tiara was bequeathed to King Frederick IX of Denmark upon the death of Princess Dagmar in 1961, it is more likely that the tiara was acquired by the main line of the Danish royal family sometime in the late 1960s or early 1970s, when we see it worn by the newly acceded Queen Margarita II for a banquet during her first state visit to Sweden, hosted by her maternal grandfather in 1973. In 1975, Princess Dagmar's diamond floral tiara was worn for the Nobel Prize ceremony in 1975 when the Queen and Prince Henrik joined her cousin, King Carl Gustav of Sweden. While not a favorite like her floral agrate tiara, Princess Dagmar's diamond floral tiara was often worn by Queen Marguerite during the 1980s, with notable appearances including the Danish state visit to Japan in 1981, the Icelandic state banquet in 1981, the Danish state visit to Spain in 1983, a state visit to Egypt in 1986, Crown Prince Harold of Norway's 50th birthday in 1987, a state visit to New Zealand in 1987, the confirmation of Crown Prince Hakon of Norway in 1988, a state visit to Poland in 1993, and a state visit to Romania in 2000. The Queen paired the tiara with her antique diamond perure, Queen Alexandrine's sapphire perure, or her Saudi diamond necklace. In 1992, Queen Margarita II loaned Princess Dagmar's diamond floral tiara to her mother-in-law, Countess René Yvonne de Laborde de Montbussat, for the banquet and subsequent gala dinner to celebrate the 25th wedding anniversary of the Danish royals. In 2001, the tiara was loaned to her niece, Princess Natalie of St. Wittgenstein Berleburg, for the wedding of Crown Prince Hakon of Norway. After having given the Alexandrine drop tiara as a wedding gift to Countess, Countess Alexandra of Fredericksburg, the first wife of her second son, and she lost it at the time of their divorce, when Prince, the, her younger son, married Mary Cavalier in 2008. Queen Margarita II learned from this and gave Princess Dagmar's diamond floral tiara not as a wedding gift to her younger son's second wife, Princess Marie, but stipulated it as a long-term loan so she wouldn't lose it like she did the Alexandrine drop tiara in a potential divorce. Which royal Danish tiara is your favorite?